Have you guys ever had those evenings where you get off work, you get home from the gym, whatever, you kind of had a long day, you just want to sit back, relax, play some ships with your friends, maybe win a few, maybe lose a few, and well, Wargaming slaps you in the face with the most prolific potatoes on your team that you have ever seen. Well, this was one of those evenings, and it reminded me of last night. I was playing with Heisman, Mark, and a few of the other uh, fellow Chads that we always play with, Alphonse, of course, and we had a few games similar to this one right here where despite our best efforts and amassing a pretty significant damage total on this one, having some fun, our team still manages to just choke it down like the sorority girls at FSU. And let me tell you, they're probably doing it a lot more with the season that FSU is having. But <laughs> we've been saving this replay for a rainy day. And I don't know if you guys can tell from my nasally sounding voice, but allergies in the region of East Tennessee have absolutely got me this week. And I feel... Pretty down and awful, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw up this replay, a little bit of commentary along the way, me raging about some teammates, but I hope you guys enjoy this one. It was a fun game start to finish, regardless of the teammates that we had, and speaking of start to finish, this game starts pretty good. We are running the Montana full damage build here with Arthas, and yeah, there is 28,000 as well as a few hits from the other ships off of that Brisbane, and he is all but eliminated rather early on in this game. Which just makes it even more surprising that we were so outclassed in this game. And that is until you actually look at our destroyer, who did spawn in the middle. And I don't really hate the play to come over to this side as kind of rushing into the center of this map here, Tears of the Desert. is not necessarily the best play as we get a beautiful hit there. 56k in two salvos. And that was even an angled Ohio there. This damage build on these battleships, man, is just honestly a lot of fun. And speaking of that Brisbane, he actually did manage to heal up a lot of his health, but he remains just spotted long enough for us to get three of our four turrets off. I believe one of them was angling or still on reload, and yep, there it is. Good night. Thanks for playing. 80k in the first three salvos of the game. We figured this one was going to go our way, and again, that is when we kind of look at our destroyer. Not exactly sure what he's doing. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> you can see my expression on stream, and it was just one of those nights, very similar to last night, where you're kind of looking, wondering, hoping that these people do not operate heavy machinery or that they're not surgeons in real life. Now, of course, video games do not translate to real life skills. However, just situational awareness and you know, understanding the game that you're playing day in and day out, as I mentioned so many times, it just, it befuddles me how people can get to the highest tier of a game and still not understand the basic concepts or what to do in a situation. But anyway, we know that it's a video game. Some people like to go out and torpedo from behind islands, and I guess that's their definition of fun. But... <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, we're going to try and kite away in this situation, attract a little bit of fire, and I should have known that those gearing torpedoes were on the way. Thank goodness they did run out, though, so a huge hit from Heisman there, and that is now two ships eliminated on this flank, but there's still a few ships to go. Looking at the minimap, though, we're going to have to make quick work of this flank that Napoli was doing a pretty good job of remaining angled, and the Napoli is one of those ships, it doesn't necessarily have the best damage output, but it can actually attract and do a lot of tanking of damage. And that is very useful, you know, in a game like this or a situation like this, when this side has kind of fallen from them and he doesn't push in, but he just kind of hangs out there. And that Napoli actually did make a few great plays. And sometimes when you have games like this where you do a lot, you can look at your teammates and blame them, certainly, <laughs> definitely in this game. But sometimes you just have to tip your cap to the enemy team as well. Dude, what Teammate, are you doing? I need your support. Which is why I always emphasize, you know, kind of playing out the situation. Their team was down two ships early. However, you can see that their strong side over on A is probably going to overtake our weak side. So if this Napoli and Ohio can hold, then that allows them time, the, the strong side, time to come over and get the crossfire, which is exactly what happens in this game as you can see that napoli kind of kiting way out there but he is distracting he's preventing this cap from being taken as well as the ohio obviously sitting in it 
And this is also a point in the game where I could potentially put a little bit of blame on ourselves for not going in and getting this Ohio a little bit sooner. We did kite out in this situation. However, when you look at the final score and our final damage total, it is hard to put much of the blame on us. But again, I always try to take some responsibility. I feel like Legends, though, especially in a 9v9, is more of a group project. And you have to look at a few of your group members like our gearing kind of headstronging into this cap here instead of maybe working his way around or seeing that we are on the strong side and we eliminated the destroyer already. So working his way onto the backside, trying to get torpedoes on target, you know, smoking up and using his guns or doing anything except for being <laughs> in the smallest channel in the game. <laughs> and there is a reaction. I thought I should have gotten a little bit more on that broadside Ohio. Now he wasn't fully broadside as he is in this situation, but good news is we're on the reload and always paying attention, right? We want to kind of turn into this Ohio in order to not give up our own broadside. He is caught in a tricky spot though. And if we don't get a massive hit in this situation, well, yeah, you're gonna see a huge rage. However, we do only one Citadel. One more probably would have been another dev strike, but early on here we have most of the damage and a few of the kills from this flank here. I'm trying to save Heisman here. I like how this guy went this way, completely ignoring the battleship and leaving it to our cruiser. <laughs> Looking at the scoreboard, you may be thinking, Aaron, how did you guys throw this game? You're about to be up three ships and, of course, the cap point if you can secure the cap from this Napoli as we take this final shot on the broadside Ohio here. Still kind of missing out, but finally we get the pitted out there. And again, it just kind of comes down to your team's positioning, right? We didn't take this flank fast enough, and of course that Napoli is still out there. As you can see, he is actually detecting us. And on that topic, I did want to mention something. You notice he is not shooting right now. We are detected. He probably has an easy broadside on us. But getting two, three, four thousand, even 10,000 damage for the risk of giving up your concealment in a situation like this is truthfully not worth it. By him waiting to open up here, he was able to complete his turn or get into a more favorable position to shoot from. And now he decides to open up, so we have to give him a little bit of attention. We are able to overmatch his nose, and he is getting focused by two, three, four ships. So I'm looking at the mini-map, and this is when I decide to go to the other flank. We have a battleship, we have a destroyer, we have a cruiser and Heisman over here. And of course, that gearing, who is being the utmost effective <laughs> on our team. You won't really notice the kind of, you know, the plays that the gearing makes until the end, and then I, I think I lose it at the end of the stream. But there is the hit on the bow, as we were talking about, 190k, about halfway through this game. And there's still five ships left on the enemy team. But with that hit, we also ticked the high caliber. So with me doing all this damage and the Sovetsi Soyuz being here... I decide that I need to reposition over to the alpha flank or at least get the crossfire on them. Spending too much time on one flank, especially in a close game, is a surefire way to lose. And speaking of losing strategies, we actually noticed that our gearing just passed us. Now he did potentially have a hand in getting the cap, however we would have got that without him. He's going out here to chase this Napoli, I'm not exactly sure why. Again, I, I respect the play to come over to our flank as opposed to maybe going up to the middle, but you have to read game flow as Heisman actually takes a very unfortunate salvo there from that central Yamato. But situational awareness, right? You look at the map and you're like, okay, we don't need to be over here at sea now if I'm a destroyer. I want to be torping this Yamato in the central. Now, there was a Wooster over there, so playing destroyers is very difficult, but it is also one of the worst played classes in my opinion. Between that and playing cruisers in a respectable fashion, you know, a lot, we give a lot of grief to battleship players, but again, out of all of the necessary things you need to do in a class, for the most part, battleship players can fulfill that role by tanking and attracting damage unless they were on my team last night uh, in that game on trap, yeah. I have a few words for you guys there, eh? But uh, anyway, here... I find myself in an Austin Powers type situation, and like I said, I, I, there are certainly things I could have done throughout this game to make more or, you know, even more of an impact than we already had. But you, again, you're looking at our damage total, our kills, our situational control of this Charlie cap, and we have done more than enough to give our team a fighting chance. And even more so when we kind of notice that this Wooster is slowly peeking around this island here, kind of focusing our last remaining ship on that flank. He did turn in just a little bit, and we just miss out once again on another dev strike. Eventually, I'm going to get one of these games where I get three, four, five, six dev strikes, 
in a game with all of the broadsides that I see so often. But alas, RNG is always going to give you that giant middle finger. And such is life in all RNG-based video games. I've, I've lived by RNG, I've died by RNG. It's just random. But speaking of not random, our teammates have decided to throw away a massive advantage, and now we are actually down on ships and points, as well as positioning. Like I said, you can always look at yourself, and this is something you should try to do. I feel like a lot of this player base, even myself included at times, you know, points the finger everywhere else except for themselves, and I definitely could have positioned better here. We allowed that Napoli to live, and you're just looking at your gearing at this situation, and you're like, buddy, what are you doing? If Heisman had not taken that salvo, though, a rather unfortunate salvo, and if I had positioned slightly better, maybe a little bit earlier on, you know, you aren't necessarily looking at the gearing player who was stuck in a channel for 80% of the game to make a play. However, this is like blaming LeBron, though, <laughs> for scoring 30 points a game and saying, why didn't you score 35 or 90, right, when his other team has 12 points combined? And again, it's a group effort. If you're playing in standard, you should, in my opinion, play in some sportsman fashion where you're trying to get the objective or help your teammates out in some way. Now, of course, everyone has a different opinion on how you should do that. But here, again, I'm trying to go out and get the angle and get the crossfires while our Sui is there holds that angle and hopefully gets the Napoli, and our gearing is doing God knows what in this situation. We have managed our health rather well in this situation, so I am able to use it. Again, you could look at my, my health bar and say, well, Aaron, why didn't you use more of your health? And well, because I didn't really have a chance or opportunity to do so before the game was pretty much out of reach. But here we're going to use a good portion of it as we get set on fire and this Yamato actually takes a good chunk off of our superstructure as we get absolutely trolled by our return salvo on him. Why did I know that that wasn't going to be that much? Now looking back on this situation, I probably could have pushed in, you know, potentially gotten a drive-by on this Yamato. However, there were two other cruisers, I believe a Zhao and a Wooster out there both of which could have easily melted me down if I had put myself in a wrong position here. So what we're trying to do is isolate each of these engagements. This Yamato is giving me a little bit of a cheek here. So if we can get the elimination on him, then we can push in without necessarily worrying about being spotted by him and melted by the cruisers behind islands. As we had seen previously, that Wooster was playing it smart and utilizing island cover while getting a few salvos and then popping into concealment. So you don't want to just blindly rush into situations without kind of first assessing, as you can see, uh, some more HE salvos coming over the island there as we get unfortunately set on a fire. However, in a situation like this, we did have to make a play. Our gearing did, you know, nothing to really help us out in this situation. And I should have helped focus the Napoli a little bit more with the Soyas. I just thought with the two people over there, they could have done something to, you know, get the elimination on him. Looking back, seeing that the Napoli is pretty low does give me a little bit of hope. And again, hindsight is always 2020. I should have pushed in much sooner than I did. It would have given me an opportunity to spot the cruiser in Bravo and potentially not allow the points to swing in their favor. Like I mentioned, the elimination on that cruiser, we actually would have been up if I had stopped the capture of the Bravo cap there. However, you can see that that Yamato is really low. And if we get two eliminations here, we can actually put ourselves in position to win this game. Once again, though, I would like to mention that if the gearing was back capping or drawing the attention of the other ships by torpedoes or what have you, you could look back and say, well, we really didn't need to worry about the cruiser in B. But again, Legends is one of those games where you have to feed off of your teammates, and if your teammates don't want to perform, it doesn't matter if you get 500k, you're never going to get the win. But sometimes what's more important about the win is the journey along the way, as we get a beautiful little salvo to finish off that Yamato. 271,000 damage, three kills, and there is the Wooster. He worked his way into the B cap. However, we do have a good angle on him now. The bad news is he does know how to angle, and the Wooster actually does have a 32 millimeter nose. You can actually access the 25 millimeter side plating, though, and that is what we're trying to do. We're waiting for this guy to either make his move. It looks like he's turning out. He turns back in, though, so he turns out once again. We throw the salvo. We do have one last remaining Arthas plane, and that is unfortunately when the Suyas runs out of damage cons, and he does go down. So we are going to... 
What looks like lose this game here. Can we get one more salvo on target? 15 seconds left in the game, 6 seconds left on our reload. It doesn't matter though, this Wooster is going to get behind this island. We just missed it. And unfortunately, that is how the cookie is going to crumble. So a GG's to everyone involved. 281k, though, is always a good game. You can see Fireproof and Dreadnought towards the end of the game. So we did manage to use a decent portion of our health in appropriate fashion. I just think it was a little too late as we have a little reaction to our gearing here who scored 800 points. And we scored 2371 on that win. That would have been 34, 34 or 3500 XP on a win so yeah but ggs to the enemy team they did the right things put their ships in the right spot in order to get the win on that one so sometimes you just gotta like i said earlier in the video tip your cap to those guys but that was a fun one in the montana there and again it's just a reminder to go out and have some fun with your friends and speaking of fun with friends we are actually having a another fantasy football draft tonight this time with a group from the legends community a few names you might recognize a few you might not but stay tuned for that tonight as aaron is ranting and raving on poor play <laughs> anyway fun time there hope you guys enjoyed that one love you guys have a great day sorry about the allergies i'm out peace